Hi, welcome back to another episode of The Things We Love and Hate. I am sitting here with David. And David, go ahead and give us a too long did not read. Who is David? What do you do? What should people know about David? All right, so my name is David Martin. I work in cybersecurity. I am a wheelchair user. I'm deaf, hard of hearing. Um, got some other neurodiverse stuff going on as well. Uh, live in San Diego, California. Wife, kid, two dogs, house. Excellent. Own a rent. We own it. So, David, let's talk about the stuff in your home that, you know, you just, it's hard, it's difficult. If you could just, just get rid of it and do it over again. What are the things you really hate in your home? Um, honestly, getting in and out of my home. Um, so we got a house that was built in 1944. It's a post pillar foundation. I've got four steps in and about an eight and a half inch threshold that I got to clear to get through the front door. I'm in a wheelchair. It's, it's not legitimately manageable. Um, we actually had to put a concrete pathway to the side yard and then I go around the back to get in the house because then we had the throw to do it and we could get a ramp in that I could pull up. Yeah, and, and I mean those ramps, they're, they're really expensive. They're, they're very expensive. They I mean, we, we wanted to put a deck in with a ramp so our, our friends in wheelchairs could be able to get into our house and um, it was going to be a 40 foot ramp because it yep. was already on a slope and then increasing the slope and you couldn't do the, you know, you had to do one inch of height for every foot of ramp distance and it was going to cost us more than our entire deck to do. And luckily we found a way of getting, you know, at, the, at it from the uphill side, which made it a lot easier to do and a lot cheaper. But, yeah. you know, at one point, the, you know, the estimate was, you know, the higher than the estimate for the rest of the entire deck just to put a ramp in. And, and that's, you know, let's face it, people can't afford to do that. And no. it probably, you know, it probably took a lot of time, effort, and coordination for you to figure out how to get your ramp in. Well, we're still figuring it out. We, we actually need to do a full remodel. The chair is a recent addition to my life. Yeah. And uh, I'll admit right now it's not pretty. We've got something that works. And... My wife and I are, are working together on what do we actually want to remodel the house into so we can retire into it and continue to live in place. Yeah, and that's yeah, it's digging into the retirement, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. but thankfully we knew we were going to be remodeling again, so it's just making it a little more expensive than it was going to do anyway. <laughs> you know, we, we also have to do a, a bathroom remodel. Yeah. Um, one of the bathrooms I can't get into because it's got one of those 1940s narrow doorways. Yeah, not even the standard 30 inch, forget about the oh, 36. Oh goodness, no, yeah. this one's yeah. 26 inches and yeah. there's no way my chair yeah. is going to get in there. Yeah. Um, but we're going to try to remodel that so it's a wet room. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a pain in the neck, isn't it? <clears throat> it is, but we need to gut it and redo it anyway, so hopefully it's only kind of a nominal add-on instead of an exorbitant add-on. Well, that's good. Uh, so structurally, that that's you know that's a huge huge issue for you. What about stuff you know with the hard of hearing, the the the, the vision issues? What kind of stuff challenges oh, you there? Um, hard of hearing, vision. Um, I don't have too much trouble with vision until my left eye decides not to work, but I just roll with that. And that's occasional. It's occasional. Yeah, yeah. I've got neurologic problems. Yeah. Um, but the hearing stuff, what drives me nuts, is manufacturers assume that one pitch for every alert works <laughs> and I have high frequency hearing loss which is the most common thing you can have yeah. and I'm sorry the smoke alarm sounds the same as the microwave I can't hear either one unless I got my hearing aids in and how hard and my car too you know it's like all the little beeps and chirps and alerts it's like I can't hear the dang things why can't I have a pitch selection for the most common form of hearing loss that'll let me put that thing down into an octave that I can hear. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's hilarious <laughs> that you say that. So, you know, my, my first video that I ever did was on a LG washing machine. And, and, and everybody knows the iconic LG sound. I don't. <laughs> well, okay. That, that, all right. Most people <laughs> know the iconic LG sound. It's do 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 for on and do 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 for off. And so they have at least a distinctive four notes that their beeper can make. But whenever you touch any of the buttons, no matter what button it is, it's all the highest pitch button. Yeah. All of it. 
why can't they use that 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 tone mechanism to you know if you're changing the temperature from cold to warm you know you, you hit the button it makes the same tone every time but you know there's no choosing there's no configuring it yeah. what if i don't want the damn tone at all to turn it off and on i mean they do allow me to turn it off and on but then i don't know that i've hit the button whatsoever and then right. it, you know i i could have just you know completely ruined and put my whites in with scalding hot or what have you yeah well and it's silly because you know it's like i've been able to change the ringer on my phone since i used an old motorola StarTac flip phone that looked like a dinosaur right yeah, yeah. But, and and you know never mind how i can put any ringer i want on my iphone why can't i change the acoustics on all my appliances yeah and, and get the alarm to tell you that your toast has popped yeah. Or, you know, that your microwave has finished. Or that maybe if you're doing the defrost cycle, it's time to flip the item in the microwave over. And why don't smoke alarms by default come with an LED, a Cree LED that flashes super bright when it goes off? They don't? No. See, I didn't even know that. No, they don't. That's, that's, <laughs> that's critically horrifying. Yeah, that's... I have to pay for the special expensive one if I want to have that type of visual indicator. The so, standard ones that I get at Home Depot don't come with with that super bright LED to flash. So you're you're paying the disability tax. Yes. Right there. And that's <laughs> that's just wrong. That's just evil and foul and wrong as far as I'm concerned. That disability tax that we have to pay more for the thing that works is just I mean, it's just wrong. I, I want to use language that YouTube would ban the video for. So yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. stay away from that. But I share yeah. I share that particular affliction. <laughs> yeah, the the, um, the the disability tax thing is a real thing. It's a huge, huge thing. I mean, you know, the cost to build your mm -hmm. ramp that's that's a disability tax. The cost to get that LED. Is, is there any other things that you know that you really think? Who, who in their right mind ever thought this was okay? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, all kinds of things come up, right? You know, it's like, okay, so at a convention where, where I'm in a hotel and they've got these wonderful automatic faucets and they've got the automatic sensor for where your hands are. I'm in a wheelchair. My hands are coming in at a different angle and they'll do all this work to give a cutout underneath the sink so I can roll underneath it, <laughs> but they've angled the sensor so my hands won't trigger the damn water. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got a secret for you. Nobody's hands actually trigger the damn water. <laughs> okay, I, I would. Yeah, know I that can't one. tell you. I can't tell you how many times I'm like, turn on, turn okay. on. For the blind audience, I'm I'm just circling my hands and in in the general position that the water should be coming out. And nothing comes out. Nothing comes okay, out. Okay, so that one at least isn't just me, right? No, but but I mean you're right though. I mean it is the angle is very awkward. I mean you're probably level with the actual faucet with your reach because right. like, because of the height that the chair gives oh, you. Oh yeah, and I rest. wear half the water every time because it always spurts out forward. Yeah, and there's that little bit of splash, and of course you know most people it ends up on your thighs, and of course on me it ends up all over my chest. Well, at least it doesn't look like you peed yourself. So <laughs> no, it just looks like I dribble when I eat. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think that's better. Better, personally <laughs> I don't know yeah, yeah. I don't know that that's just my opinion but um, all right so now let's, let's let's reverse it and let's talk about what you might like in you know mm. what you've seen around environmentally the things in your home what, what what do you what do you take pleasure in the fact that somebody thought about this or maybe it was a sheer accident yeah um, you know I'll say for owning a house that was built in 1944 I'm super lucky that literally there is one doorway in our house that I can't get a wheelchair through. Everything else is 32 inch doorways and you know, 36 would be nice, but I can get through a 32 without wrapping my knuckles. So I'm a happy camper. Excellent. And you're using a manual chair. I am in a manual so chair. That your, is correct. Wrapping your knuckles is a thing. So yeah, I got yeah. bloody knuckles right now from this conference. Cause I was trying to go around somebody who was standing in the doorway and I missed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it, it's a fact of life. So I do pretty well there. Yeah. Um, my gosh, I love hardwood floors. Well, they're beautiful uh, too. They're beautiful and they also roll like a dream. Yeah. So hardwood floors are awesome, especially when they're level and I don't start coasting backwards by mistake. <laughs> but, you know, I got brakes. They're easy to use, so in, that works. In a 1940 house, that can happen. Yeah, we, we had some jack work done, so it's leveled. That's one of the benefits of a post-pillar foundation. Good. Is you can re-level the floor. Good. Um, 
you know, there goes 5,000 bucks, but you can do it. Oh, back to our disability tax. Yeah, 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 it is. What about things like putting things on the stove and washing the dishes? I mean, right. okay. how's the reach, for example, of putting a pot on a stove? So for me, it's not an issue because I'm, I'm, with, I'm an ambulatory para. Okay. Um, I can stand well. Um, it's just when I try to lift my left foot off the ground that all hell breaks loose and we have issues. Okay. So I actually do do all the cooking. Um, I can stand at a stove and cook, and inside the house I will often use forearm crutches if I'm if I'm doing chores and stuff. Okay. Kind of a pain to carry things when I do that. Yep. Um, we have lots of rolling hampers, and I just kind of play soccer with them and scoot them across the house. <laughs> I love it. But you it makes know, it, it fun, right? It gets yeah. it done, right? Yeah. It, yeah. it gets it done, and you know, a lot of it is, you know, can you adapt? Can you do things a little differently and make it work? Um, I personally love cooking. It's yep. my happy place. Um, our laundry yeah. is impossible for me because it's down the back deck and then it's into the garage, which is its own separate set of steps, and we haven't finished that set of adaption yet. Uh, okay. um, long term, we'll probably have to put a lift in there yep. um, because we'd like to adapt it so that we have a combination of ramp and lift. Um, you know, Because in a manual wheelchair, your wrists go, your shoulders go. I've had six shoulder surgeries. I've had multiple wrist surgeries already on the left side. We know the day is coming. And, and some days you're just too worn out. Yeah. 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 And some days I'm tired. Thankfully, 30 years ago when I met my lovely wife, um, we realized she hates cooking and she can't stand the way I do laundry. And so for 30 years I've had clean underwear and she's had dinner on the table. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, some agreements you don't revisit. <laughs> <laughs> no, good good thing on that one, yeah. Um, what about, like, the refrigerator and stuff like that? I mean, is it, is it sometimes awkward to stand and try and open the door? Is it heavy? I mean, or did, um, or did you, do you have one, luckily, that the door is an easy maneuver while you're standing there and making sure that left foot doesn't leave the yeah. ground? Yeah, so we, we have a refrigerator that has two doors, and then okay. it's got a freezer down below. Okay. And I really like that configuration because when I am in the chair... I, can, I always have a flat surface I can brace my hand on to pull the door open. Excellent. Yeah. So I don't even have to flip my brakes. Now, if I want to get both doors open, I can open one at a time. So I open one, and then I brace on the open one, and I open the other. Excellent. Yeah. So I don't have any trouble with that. I have really long arms, so I can actually reach everything except the back of the top shelf. Well, here's news for you. I can't reach the top shelf at all. So Okay. <laughs> yeah, that top shelf, I think you're not supposed to use it. I think it's there for looks only. There you go. Yeah, we try to keep it clear so ice doesn't accumulate in the fridge, but yeah, yeah, that, things that. get shoved back there and then I have to get someone else to get to it. <laughs> or I have to stand up and deal with it. Exactly. Okay. Um, you know, are, are the controls for your stove on the back or on the front? They're on the front. So you know, if you have to just roll up, put a pot down, and then roll away, you can do that. Then. I can, yes. Excellent. But I think that's critical to think about is because a lot of stoves... You know, the burner controls are actually on the back. More and more are moving the oven controls to the front. Yes. Still, a lot of stoves are on the back. So, You know, it's funny because we put this stove in long before I needed it yeah. with the controls in the front. But again, I love to cook. It's actually a commercial unit. And they put the controls on the front so you have more space for your pots and pans. You know, in my house, all the appliances are commercial because... It's all knobs. It's all analog. Yes. There's no digital crap in commercial. Yes, I have no push buttons on anything in my kitchen. Yeah, it's all knobbies. And, and, and it's, you know, you know that if you turn to 530, it's 425 degrees, and that's mm -hmm. what you need. And that's, that's the way it works. All right, well, we're drawn close to, to the end of this. Um, if you had, you know, an audience of manufacturers and designers and engineers in the room, what would be the one thing you'd want to tell them? Like, you know, you've got a moment, you've got to make an impact. Give, give me your elevator pitch. You know, engage with people from all levels of ability, of ability, right? And all levels of disability when you're designing your products. And, you know, if you take a note from the gluten-free movement that started about 10 years ago. Yep. The food manufacturers realized really, really quickly that, you know, well, maybe only 4% or 6% of the population is gluten-sensitive. If 
you don't have a gluten-free offering, you're not just losing that four to six percent of the population, you're losing their entire family. So you've actually lost four customers. Yeah. Yep. And I wish they would start approaching disability the same way. Where, you know, as I said, I want my acoustic alarms to be in a pitch that I can hear without my hearing aids. That would be so nice. Really common thing. It impacts my entire family. You know, there are four of us, or three of us, in the house. You're losing all three customers if you're making something that I can't hear. Yeah, that's 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 beautiful, is, is that it's not just that 25%, it's really the 75% because we all... We all have people who we depend on and depend on us. You know, I, I had a, a person in this interview a while back that said, you know, they had three kids. They lost those three kids, too, because those three kids grew up with mom. I love that one. That's, that's probably one of my favorite, uh, favorite moments that, that people have given. Well, David, this has been wonderful. Uh, I really enjoyed having you here and getting this different perspective. You know, this whole series is all about different perspectives and you brought, you know, the most unique perspective to this. And I really love that. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been wonderful.